Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Back to another all new episode of PR from the Hearts Children's Book Spotlight Series. To be precise, we have reached episode number 205. That is the 205th trolley stop here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series here at PR from the Heart. My name is John Massalonis, the manager of PR from the Heart and the host of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. And it's very fitting that we're spending some time with all of you today. We're going to be peeling the curtain back a little bit in the process because you may be seeing a familiar face. Technically, you are seeing two faces here that are actually joining us in this very special trolley stop. You remember him and you love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the popular long-running children's television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. We know him and we love him as David Newell. Of course, David, each and every month, has joined us over the past three years on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. And David, this is a very special trolley stop because after all the years that we've known one another, this is your first time guest co-hosting the Children's Book Spotlight series. Well, I'm glad to do it, and I want to say speedy delivery to all of our, our viewers, and we, here I am. <laughs> we are spending some quality time on a very special day, because even though this episode is premiering on April the 8th of 2024, so hello to all of you in the month of April, we are recording this episode on what would be the 96th heavenly birthday of our favorite neighbor, Mr. Rogers. And needless to say, things can't be scripted any better. And it's very interesting, David, although we've had many conversations off air about how there were many people that have come to you after Fred's passing saying, you know what, I want to be the next Fred Rogers. I want to be the next Mr. Rogers. And he always reminded us in his own very special and unique way that just by being our highest, most authentic selves, that we can change the world. Yes, ordinary people can change the world. That's a perfect segue as joining us. We have, we're calling this an extra, extra special trolley stop. We are privileged to be able to be joined by New York Times bestselling author, the co-creator of the beloved Ordinary People Change the World series, which is proudly celebrating its 10 year anniversary. We're going to be diving into the two newest installments of the Ordinary People Change the World series. I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg and go figure, I am Mr. Rogers. They are now available. We encourage all of you, again, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. Be sure to leave five-star reviews for both. I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg and I am Mr. Rogers, along with the other classics that are now a part of the Ordinary People Change the World series. The trolley is going to be racking up a lot of mileage. We start here in San Diego. We go to pick David up in Pittsburgh, and then we head to the beautiful sunny state of Florida, joining us for his first appearance on the Children's Book Spotlight series, talking all things Mr. Rogers, and then some, again, New York Times bestselling author and the co-creator of the Ordinary People Change the World series, Brad Meltzer. Brad, we appreciate you spending some quality time with David and I here in our neighborhood today. How are things with you? Uh, they are. So, I am so happy to be here, and I can tell you, None of I love the fact that none of us planned that we were going to be here on Mr. Rogers' birthday, Proof. and that just happened. And I think that there's something beautiful, and and you have to you know listen to the universe sometimes. So I love the fact that we're going to discuss one of my truly favorite heroes of one of my favorite books I've ever written, and it happens to be his birthday. So happy birthday to him! Agreed. This is a very fitting way that we're spending all of this quality time together today. One of the many ways that you can. Pledge your support for Brad in addition to us here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series and PR from the Heart. If you are feeling all of the good neighborly vibes, if you feel that there's someone that you know that is unfortunately not feeling the neighborly vibes and needs a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a boost to start the spring, we encourage you to subscribe to PR from the Heart's official YouTube channel and to share this very special trolley stop that you are now enjoying. That is episode number 205 of the Children's Book Spotlight series on your favorite social media platforms of your choosing. Join the more than 10,000 plus members of the PR from the Heart family on YouTube. We always begin here on Children's Book Spotlight series, Brad, with origin stories. And I'm fascinated to learn more about you. Now, it's very easy when someone turns on the television, they see you on Morning Joe, they see you on Good Morning America, different programs all across the country. You're one of the top, not only authors in the world of children's literature, 
but also in all of literature for that matter as well too. Specifically speaking, we all have an origin story, especially when it comes to our mission, our purpose. I believe it was Dr. Wayne Dyer that used the term Dharma. When did you know? Was it a specific moment in time or was it a series of moments in time that you knew that a large part of your mission was here for children? Yeah, you know, I, I think for me, uh, I came from a house where there wasn't much reading. There was, you know, there were no books, I should say. There were no actual books that I can remember in my house. My mom read The Star and the Inquirer. My dad used to read the sports pages. But it was my grandmother who had this magical object, one of the most magical things of all, which was um, it, it, better than Harry Potter's wand. It, it was a library card. And I remember she took me to the Brooklyn Public Library and... and um, she's, and, and the librarian said, here's your section. These are for you. And I literally thought she meant these are all for me. All these books were mine. And I guess she wasn't too far from being correct, but it was there that I got introduced to children's books. And that eventually, as I read, I met new friends like Judy Bloom and Agatha Christie. Um, and uh, I can tell you that when I was uh, five years old, a man named Mr. Rogers and another named Jim Henson told me through my television that I can put good into the world and use your creativity to put some good into the world. That's what they told me. And that's all I've been trying to do since is use my creativity to put some good into the world. I didn't truthfully ever think I was going to be the children's book writer. Um, I just wanted to tell stories. And then I had my own kids and I realized I wanted them to have that influence of good. I wanted to have that influence of, you know, I, I wanted to give my kids, I was tired of them looking at people who are famous for being famous or were an overpaid athlete. I wanted to show them what a real hero looked like, what kindness and goodness and perseverance look like. And the funny part was, is the first name that popped to mind was, of course, Mr. Rogers. Um, and I started writing children's books to give these kids better heroes to look up to. The Ordinary People Changed the World series came out of that. We started with I Am Amelia Earhart. We did I Am Abraham Lincoln. I Am Rosa Parks and I Am Albert Einstein. Um, my son loves sports. And I said, you know what? Forget uh, an overpaid millionaire athlete. I said, why don't you look at this guy? His name is Jackie Robinson. And I love the fact that over 10 years now, uh, the one thing I've learned is the thing I always knew is I'm not that special. There were so many parents who had that same mission for their own kids. They wanted to give their kids better heroes to look up to. So yeah, as an origin story, it really came out of just being a, exposed to those stories as a kid, getting that message from Mr. Rogers and Jim Henson to tell me that I had the power within me and, and finding my way there. There was a very fitting part of the Mr. Rogers documentary where the late Joanne, Fred's wife, was sharing it was a was a passage either a journal entry or something that fred wrote how he was experiencing his own doubt and his own insecurity so we all can experience our own challenges and difficulties obstacles problems stressors troubles worries you name it again it's very easy if you're if you're a parent you're an educator and you turn on the tv and you see wherever it is that you are in the world like Brad Meltzer has it made. He's a New York Times bestselling author, so he has it made. He has no challenges, no difficulties. Specifically speaking, what were some of the challenges and difficulties that you experienced along the path of note? And what were some of the things that helped you to move through to the other side of those challenges and difficulties? Yeah, you know, my if you really want to know my true origin story, um, it comes from when I'm 13 years old, which is the day that my dad, at 39 years old, lost his job. And he didn't just lose where he was working. He lost everything. And my dad was always very bad with money. Um, so we didn't just lose. We lost our house. We lost where we lived. We, he lost, of course, his job. But he had no plan for anything else. He, he called it the do-over of life as if it was a fun game. We're going to have the do-over of life. And we were going to move to Florida because we couldn't stay in New York anymore. New York was just too tough for my family. And again, he had no place to live, didn't even have enough money saved. He had $1,200 to his name. That was it. And he didn't have enough money for the security deposit, so we didn't have any place to live. So we picked Florida because my grandmother lived there, and we could stay in her one-bedroom apartment. My family had four people in it, my grandmother, my grandfather, there were six of us in a one-bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And we stayed there for months because they, my parents were just trying to save enough money for a security deposit. And the truth was is I lost everything in one day. 
It is the origin story for me because built into me in that moment, I've never been able to shake that idea that as good as life can be and as wonderful it can be, um, it can all go away in a snap. And thankfully for me, Florida was a better place for my family. I had a, a, and, a, and my turnaround to get out of the holes that we were in came from my teachers. My ninth grade English teacher was a woman named Sheila Spicer. And Sheila Spicer changed my life with three words. She said to me, you can write. And I was like, well, everyone can write. She said, no, no, you know what you're doing. And she tried to put me in the honors class. I had some sort of conflict. So she said, here's what we're going to do. You're going to sit in the corner for the entire year. Ignore everything I do on the blackboard. Ignore every homework assignment I'm going to give. And she said, you're going to do the honors work instead. And really what she was saying was, you're going to thank me later. And a decade later, my first book came out. I went back to her classroom. I knocked on the door. She said, can I help you? I said, my name is Brad Meltzer. I wrote this book and it's for you. And she started crying when I gave it to her. I said, why are you crying? She said, you know, I was going to retire this year because I didn't think I was having an impact anymore. Mm. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, you have 30 students with one teacher. And Miss Spicer had this impact on my life that I never knew about. And, and that belief that she put in me is I think what gave me the ability to go through anything else. When I, when I wrote my first novel, again, that sounds like it was easy. I just wrote a book and it was published. My first novel that I ever wrote never got published. It's still sitting on my shelf behind me. It was, it got 24 rejection letters. There were only 20 publishers. I got 24 rejection letters, which means some people writing me twice to make sure I got the point. But I said, if they don't like that book, I'm going to write another. And if they don't like that book, I'm going to write another. And the week after I got my 23rd and 24th rejection letter was the week I started my, my next book, uh, which was the one that actually sold. And I always kind of thought about Miss Spicer's message in the back of my head, that one person who tells you, you can do this thing. And I think for all of us, I was just reading um, about the social scientist who figured out that when someone tells you that you trust and believe in, that they tell you what you're good at. Not only do we love hearing that because it makes us feel good, but we actually try to become that person. So if someone says, John, you're super creative, you know, or Mr. McFeely, you, you know, you're just a, a kind person. You will, you will truly become a kinder person from it. You will truly become it because you will want to be that good thing that they see in you. And I look at that and it seems so obvious, but I, I, I don't, I don't think I ever really appreciated how much Miss Spicer made me become that person that I wanted to be in her eyes. And for me, that's always been a story over and over. We've lost, you know, in, in my, I, I lost my dad. I lost my mom. We've been through all these, you know, different disasters in my, and, and the reason I, you know, kind of keep getting up and keep saying, okay, let's, let's keep going is hearing all of their voices in my head um, to, that you have to get up and, and move forward, right? You, you got to keep going one step at a time. In the words of Mr. Rogers, uh, it sounds like Miss Spicer helped love you into being in many ways, which is beautiful. And I'm, I'm really glad that you took the time to be able to to share that story. I know that, Dave, you've got a couple of questions to hop into momentarily. I had one other specific one as well to be able to start things off. Taking a look at the fact that there is now over, I believe, over 30 titles in the Ordinary People Change the World series. In many respects, you are a custodian. You're a caretaker for some of the most important figures in our history. What has that been like yeah. for you with, with each passing story, each book that comes out? What has the whole experience meant to you being a caretaker and a custodian for all of these beautiful hearts? <clears throat> no, I really, um, it's funny. I don't stop and think about that. I just tell the story um, in the beginning. And now, of course, I can't help but think about it. And uh, to me, it's an honor. It's completely humbling. Um, and I think that there's a real responsibility. There's a real responsibility to tell these stories. You know, what we do with our history today is we, we try to sugarcoat it. We try to make it all beautiful. We, you know, we tell the American history story and we make it like George Washington. And we just all held hands and we think we thought of democracy and we took down the British, the greatest fighting force America, you know, anyone had ever seen in the world at that time. And it's a beautiful story. It's a wonderful story. That's not the true story. It was far harder than that. And the thing that I'm most proud of in all of our books is we tell these stories of people 
but we never show them as perfect people. Mm. So you see the election that George Washington lost. You see the uh, half a dozen elections that Abraham Lincoln lost. You see the moment that Rosa Parks, the first time she encountered that bus driver, because it was when you, the famous moment where, where she sits down is not the first moment she encounters that bus driver. He actually picks on her earlier in her life. And she stands, you know, doesn't do anything for what he says. She's coming back another time to stand up to him. I love the fact that in I Am Mr. Rogers, that you see him when he's younger, when he loses his temper, when he's being bullied, when he mails away for a catalog that says, I'm going to get bigger muscles and become stronger because those boys are making fun of me. I think one of Mr. Rogers' great lessons is none of us are perfect, that we have to love ourselves for exactly who we are. That's my one of my core beliefs. And I love the fact and the responsibility that I have with these stories is I got to go find the real experts to help help me. I can't possibly know the, you know, the, the intricacies of Rosa Parks or Dr. King. So when we did I Am Martin Luther King Jr., I went to Congressman John Lewis. I said, can you help me with this book and be my advisor on it? Because he liked our Rosa Parks book. I said, you were marching with Dr. King. Can you do that? He said, absolutely. When we did I Am Billie Jean King, we went to her. Jane Goodall helped with hers. Dolly Parton and helped with hers. Same with Oprah Winfrey. For Mr. Rogers, we went to Fred Rogers Productions. He said, you're the company that represents him, that knows his legacy and makes it live every day in our world. And gave it to them and t- said, tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's right. I felt so bad. I knew I was doing the book when Joanne was sick. And passed away and I so wish I would have known about it earlier so I could have gotten her away and and for I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg um obviously she passed away we went her it was the first time we went to it was someone who I knew and I'd met her a number of times but I went to her family I went to her daughter and her granddaughter I gave her daughter the book and said tell me what's wrong with this and we you know made corrections every time so we went to Jackie Robinson's daughter when we did I am Jackie Robinson and and it, you know as, as a long-winded way to answer your question, um, it's such a responsibility to me that I know I can't just think that I'm enough. I need to go out and find the best people out there to make sure I'm doing justice to these amazing, incredible, you know, historical figures. And you have been doing that in a beautiful way. And we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars, to head on over to Amazon.com. If that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing, you can place your orders of I am Mr. Rogers. I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You can change the world. Inspiration for Future Heroes, the newest installment in the Ordinary People Change the World series. All of them and then some are now available. Of course, one of the many ways you can pledge your support for Brad is to leave five-star reviews for any of those books, for all of the wonderful stories that are found within the Ordinary People Change the World series, letting him know that he's doing a wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books. Again, New York Times bestselling author, the co-creator of the Ordinary People Change the World series, Brad Meltzer, joining myself, John Massalonis, and David Newell here on the Children's Book Spotlight series. David, I know that um, you came up with some wonderful questions, and I wanted you to be able to, uh, to have the floor and share those wonderful questions with Brad. Well, I have, Brad has answered uh, <laughs> my question so thoroughly, but I was thinking as uh, Brad, you were, you were telling your, your story. I think your next book <laughs> should be, or one of your books should be, I am Sheila Spicer, because it seems that Sheila is responsible in many, many ways, inspired you at least for all the books you've turned out. Um, over over the years, uh, but that that's just a little. But but what I was wondering, I've been a part of Mister Rogers' neighborhood for for many years now, and as you were telling your story, I was just wondering, what was the first time that you remembered? Do you remember the first time you saw Mister Rogers' neighborhood on, on television? I mean, do you remember the first or second or? When did you really become aware of the program? Yeah, I appreciate that, Mr. Noel. And, and, you know, it's so funny to me because I can't, you know, I, I, I'm honored to be here to talk with you because um, the answer to that question about you and about Mr. Rogers is the same, which is something that is, you know, a TV show or just a thing that's a, you know, pop cultural throwaway. Whatever, you can remember the first one you saw. The, I remember the first Batman comic I ever read. I remember uh-huh. the first... Justice League comic book I ever read. And I love those things. They're part of my identity. But Mr. Rogers 
neighborhood was something different. It was like a family member. It was always there. It's like saying, when do you remember your grandfather the first time? I'm like, I don't know. They just were always there. That's how I feel about the, the show. I feel this um, incredible, um, I can't, I'm trying to think of the word, but it's, it's just persists. It's, it's there as much as my memory is there. There's no one episode. There's no first episode. It just always is part of my childhood and my identity and who I was. And for me, that was, um, you were a part of that. And, and, you know, the thing that I remember though, very clearly beyond the sweater and the, you know, there was always that, there's something mesmerizing of him, of course, zipping up the sweater and changing the shoes and, and, and doing all that. that. That's always mesmerizing. But I just remember that feeling of someone saying, you know, and, and, and as he says it best, that I like you just the way you are. Mm-hmm. That, that's powerful. And, and I was someone who grew up a little different than everyone in their family. I, you know, I was the one who read and I was the nerdy one and I was doing those things that my parents had no interest in. Um, but he made me feel like however I was, as nerdy as I was, that was A-OK. That, that, that's, that's a wonderful story. And, and I have a similar one. I'll tell you very quickly. Uh, do you ever know, did you know the Uncle Wiggly stories? You ever have Uncle Wiggly? No, one no please tell me. Uncle- uh, no one seems to remember Uncle Wiggly. John didn't, but I grew up with the Uncle Wiggly stories. To make a long story short, he he his name was Howard R. Garris, and he lived in New Jersey. My mother took me to meet him in person, and to this day, I have still have the book that he signed for me, Howard R. Garris, and that was that that did it. And my mother took me to the library i i was encouraged to 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 read i i'm it was interesting there's a your your family read this my father read the sports pages my mother read books but there was reading in the house and i think that that helped a lot and but you overcame that i that was wonderful and is sheila spicer was your uh, introduction to books really right in writing and yeah and listen miss miss spicer to this day i've written uh, by I think last count, fifty-one books. Obviously, thirty-three Boy. of them are thirty-three of them are kids' books. Twelve or thirteen thrillers and nonfiction and all that. Every single book I write, a free copy goes guess where? Right to Miss Spicer. I don't, you know, I don't send free books to to, to my best friends. Miss <laughs> Spicer gets a copy forever. Well, you know, I don't care where I go, what the publisher is. There's a list that comes and it says, here's, you know, Good Morning America is going to get one and this one's going to get one. But Miss Spicer, there's a copy. Boom, it's going to show up in her mailbox. And, and I, you know, I don't need to get a review. I, 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 I'm more, my teachers who have influenced me, I had a debate teacher who really helped me learn how to kind of speak publicly. And he used to come to my book signings and he used to sit in the back with a debate form and he would rank my speech. To the, to the people who were at the book signing. And he would, of course, just say everything was great and I was perfect in every way, which was a complete exaggeration and wrong. But I cared more about what Mr. Ullery wrote about me than what the New York Times wrote about me and what Entertainment Weekly wrote about me than anyone wrote about me. I cared more about him and what his thoughts were on me, even though I know he was exaggerated and being extra kind. Those teachers who are there for you when you're young, they don't just educate you, they help form you Hmm. and that's what you did that's what mr rogers did you helped form us into who we are and and we all know if you don't love yourself you don't have that sense of of self it's a hole that can't be refilled you know and 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 so to have that young and to get that young is just so vital to to the the foundation of who I am as a person. So I, I came on this podcast today, of course, to talk about Mr. Rogers. I really came truthfully, Mr. Newell, to say thank you. Thank you for what you did for all those kids. You're, you know, there are millions of kids out there who are never going to know you where you are right now. You'll, of course, never possibly know who they are. You didn't know me. We, we texted a couple of times when the book was coming out. You were so kind to, to text me back. But before that moment, you can't know your impact on me. We don't know, like Miss like Miss Spicer, we don't know 
our impact on other people. But you had a huge impact on me. So thank you. That's what I came here to well, say today. Well, thank you, because, you know, you feel like you're doing the program when we were taping the program for four walls in a studio. There's no studio audience. And then you go out and do personal appearances or or letters come into the office and you can see the impact that television had and i'm so glad to be a part of that you know it was fred rogers really who was the uh, creator and the host and wrote the music and wrote the scripts and he was the one who was talking to them but i felt that i had a little bit of input and to help helping him with his message and that was my I was delighted. So thank you for writing uh, I Am Mr. Rogers. That is uh, a, a, a wonderful book. And, you know, the illustrations that uh, uh, Chris did are, are wonderful. And uh, What do you think about some of the other books of, of children's literature today? Is there any one that, other one you can think of that is a favorite of yours? Oh, there are so many. Thank you for mentioning Chris Eliopoulos, our incredible artist. I mean, um, he has some wonderful books that he does on his own, a little emotional. Um, he does these books about how to deal with your feelings. Again, impact from Mr. Rogers. Um, um, I still, and, and you know what? I still love the classics. I still laugh every time I read The Monster at the End of This Book, starring Gro lovable Fariel Grover. I still laugh at that book that I love. <laughs> I love Caps for Sale when I was a little kid. Remember Caps for Sale? I do. He sends a cap, and there was the the. I, I love that book. I bought it for my kids when they were younger, even though it was you know a generational difference. Um, of course, I love uh, Fox and Socks and Doctor Seuss, and I love you know Judy Bloom, and as you you know become that young adult and trying to figure out who you are and what's going on. I, those things all stand the test of time, and um, oh. you know, to me, I, I feel like with our stories and our books. All I am is a caretaker, right? I, maybe that's how you feel when you talk about it and go around and talk about them now. Is but, but it's a caretaker of these of, of these stories, and and all I get to do, I didn't write them, I didn't create them, I didn't do anything with them. I'm just gonna, I just thankfully have the ability to put them in lots of kids' hands. And and you know, in today's world, it's really hard to change adults' minds. But for a oh, decade yes. now, and I know it's not anywhere near what you've done, but. For a decade now, we've been arming a young generation of kids with lessons of kindness and compassion. And I'll take that battle any day. That's worth it to me every single day. But you have started with all of the books you have. In the Mr. Rogers book, I, I love it. And uh, I, I was thinking as you were talking uh, something about uh, love. And love, Fred always said that love is the basis for everything. And I think you can see that in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It's not, it's very subtle throughout every program, his music, his songs, his words, his appreciation. And I think there's a, there's a, a saying that, uh, I think it's, it could be a Mormon saying it's, it's attitudes are caught, not taught. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you. That's great. It, if and I'll give you a quick example, I know we have you've got a time frame here, but uh, Fred Rogers, uh, when he was studying for his uh, child development degree, was required to visit uh, daycare centers, and the parents would bring in and show the children each week what they did. And one parent was a sculptor, and he brought in just a chunk, a big chunk of clay, and started to make a a, a wonderful. Uh, sculptor for the kids and this uh, the the crafts from that point on after that sculptor visited were uh, 80 percent better than ever before and fred always said that the kids caught this sculptor's love for what he was doing and if you love doing something in front of children they'll catch it and i think that's what children do with your books as well as adults and that's, that's well, I, I appreciate little... that. Yeah, I appreciate that. And let me let me use this moment just because you brought it up. Because um, I know we are talking to people who, who know you so well, but I, I want to single you out. This is the page. Um, that's Fred Rogers' grandfather. 
Fred McFeely, your character, yes. of course, the namesake. Um, who and Fred is all Fred is also, of course, named after Mr. Rogers, named after, I should say. And he would say after every visit together, he would always say to him, Freddie, you made this day a special day for me. And he, and, he, and he says, it helped me realize how valuable every human being is, including myself. Isn't that beautiful? And then the next page has the line you just said, and I want to read it because it's so important. It says, love is at the root of everything, all learning and teaching and relationships. And the lesson that he has is my favorite lesson in this whole book. And I can't believe you just, of course, mentioned it, but of course you did, is he talks this, tells a story about his mother, when he was little, they, they, his family had money. Um, his mother heard that there was a student who couldn't afford yes. new shoes in their school. And so she bought him brand new high tops. And the nurse, she gave them to the nurse, and the nurse gave them to the kid who couldn't afford them. And over time, the school nurse would order coats and eyeglasses and furniture and send the bills to his mom. <laughs> but Fred Rogers' mother would never take credit for it. And what did Mr. Rogers learn in that moment? How to be a good neighbor. Right. And, and the idea that wouldn't it be great if that love like that was shown to all kids. It's the core to me of his entire identity is seeing that. And, and I think, as you said, it's not taught, it's caught. But, and, and, and it's Fred so funny you mentioned that it. from his mother. A hundred percent, of course. And do you know that uh, I never knew that story about uh, the nurse sending uh, the bills to Fred's mother. I never knew. I never knew. I knew a lot of it, but I never knew that. And in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, that's where Fred grew up. The McFeely Rogers has a, they have a foundation, and they provide provided Fred loved to swim. Now there's a McFeely Rogers pool that's available in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and that family. Wait, so I have to ask. Wait. I have to ask, so I'm sorry to interrupt you. Like, I love that they do that. How did you meet him, though? You Were, were you from Latrobe, or were you just from Pittsburgh? Or I know you were oh, outside. No, no. I mean, well, how, did you, I, how did you get in there? I knew how, who Fred was because of the children's corner. When I was younger, I was too old sure. to watch it, but I knew of it. He was a big uh, force in Pittsburgh television. Uh, but and we I should know. say the Children's Corner was one of his first shows. Just for anyone who's listening and watching, yes, you'll that, see it in the book as well. Um, but before they had Mister Rogers' Neighborhood, a Children's Corner was Corner. the first time you'll see uh, Daniel Tiger and some other amazing characters. And, and you you say that very well in your book. But but for, uh, Fred uh, came back to Pittsburgh and started the Children's Corner. He was working at NBC in New York City, and. That morphed into, I'm skipping a lot of details, morphed into Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And when that was about ready to go on the air, I had a telegram. I was in London, England, visiting my cousin the summer of 1967. And I got a telegram saying that Fred Rogers is taking the program national. And I've given your name to Fred Rogers to be considered to be on the staff. I came back, I met Fred, and I'm going through this quickly. And to make a long story short, he talked to me for about an hour about everything except the job. And at the end of the hour, he said, when can you start? Mm -hmm. And here I am talking that's to you. That's great. I love that. that. That's You just told the perfect and, Mr. Rogers story. Thank you for that. And I And he interviewed me, in quotes, interviewed me by finding out who I was. And, and I think I found out who he was within that hour. He he uh, told me about his travels because I had just come back from uh, five dollars a day in, in Europe when you could do that, and and we we hit it off. And there were other people that were being interviewed. I was the last, and he I guess made up his mind right there. He said, "When can you start?" And I started, and here I am, fifty six years later, something like that talking to you about i am mr rogers <laughs> so thank you for i mean yeah listen that. that's it you know someone said to me recently yeah someone said to me uh, i saw this thing uh, this quote recently and it said um it said there are many doors in life and some doors are going to be open to you and some doors in your life are going to close in your face and and when you see those doors that are open you got to walk through them that those are yes. your doors and, well, and I, you, you, you walk through those doors and I walk through my doors and somehow those doors, you know, I love that they eventually connected. 
though they have, and I think I was pulled through the door by Fred. And I thought I had <laughs> sometimes you just gotta follow the good people through the door, whatever yes. it takes. That that's right. And I thought I had a job for one year, and here I am, and I'm still talking about the neighborhood, doing speeches, talking about uh, on the the book cast. We, I, I, I'm as David Newell, of course, but I'm still doing something related to the neighborhood and my love for working with Mr. Rogers. It, it changed my life. And, uh, yeah. and listen, I changed mine, right? I mean, yes. I sit here, I sit here because of that person who just inspired me through a television show of all things, right? I mean, and it worked, it worked, the plan worked. You know, I've always heard, you know, you hear the, the naysayers, the television's terrible, don't let your kids watch television. And Yes, there's a there's some something to that, but you have to be selective and find the programs that are appropriate, especially for young children. Mister Rogers' Neighborhood Sesame is another program are uh, so appropriate. And thanks to PBS, I've always thanked PBS because they provide, I think, the best programs for children on television which in turn inspired you to write some of the best books about different people. So here we are again. And, and listen, PBS changed my life. And, and PBS put took our, our books and turned them into a TV show. There's, you should look up um, Xavier Riddle in the Secret Museum. We did, It's a, about a boy named Xavier, his sister Yadina, and their best friend Brad, the most handsome yes. cartoon character of all time. Um, and they have a problem like they're being bullied. They go back in time and meet Rosa Parks, and Rosa Parks teach them how to deal with bullies. And... Our season finale of our first season was a two-part episode. I am Mr. Rogers. We got to put him in cartoon form. Uh, if you don't cry when you watch this episode, uh, we haven't done our job. And and I love the fact, and, and I still use, I'm telling you this simply to say, you know, I, I took very clearly, Mr. Rogers, when I was writing the book, talked about, you know, you don't need to throw pies in people's faces and embarrass children. That's just not mm -hmm. how you teach them. And there was a moment in the show we were trying to figure out how to get a, a, a laugh and someone said, well, we'll put a pie in his face. And I just said, and it had nothing to do with Mr. Rogers. It wasn't on his episode with, and I just said, no, we're not doing that. We're not going to do that. Like PBS has been kind enough to give us Xavier Riddle as a TV show. We turn the IM books into that. The ordinary people change the world books into that. We're going to do it correctly. And so his influence is still being felt in our show. And I'm sure in so many others. But that's interesting that Fred, that was the one thing that really turned him to, positive children's television seeing those slapstick comedies and again i'm going to put a little ps here that i i happen to, to enjoy slapstick comedies however it's not the fodder for for children's television you know that's a separate entity. correct correct uh, oh, correct uh, but, but uh i was gonna say oh one other thing and i know we have to move on here because of of your schedule but uh there's one thing i wanted to say oh about the bullies. Uh, I've often wondered if Fred wasn't bullied and made fun of and chased home, as, as all this is in your, your book, I wonder if there would have been a Mr. Rogers neighborhood. I think he took all of that, all of the trauma, I guess you could call it, and the sadness and happiness and put it into Mr. Rogers neighborhood, which in turn helped so many people, and still is, uh, help you, help me, helped a lot of people. And the letters that came in over the years and still come in from the reruns that are on Amazon and PBS Kids are phenomenal. So I just thought I'd throw that in because it really changed my no, life. No, I, listen, I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, I think those things that we write off as like, you know, oh, that's something that just happened when I was a kid. They, they're formative. Everything is formative. Yeah. I mean, I, you asked my origin story. I told you, I didn't tell you the best day of my life. I told you the worst days. I told you the days that just beat me up. But the fact that I got up and stood up, and in fact, I took those rejections. I don't look back on the experience. Oh, I was right and they were wrong. Ha ha. Man, that's a big headed way to look at it. I, I look back and realize that whatever it is you love to do, whether you're a writer, you're on a podcast, you're, you know, you're a TV, you know, personality you're a legend to millions of kids or you're you know working at home or doctor lawyer policeman whatever else you want to be don't let anyone tell you no don't let anyone tell you no you've got to find your dream you got to chase your dream and those lessons are come from from all those those 
pivotal points when I was a kid. Perseverance, right? I, I, I think the one. Uh, I, I think that's when you were mentioning earlier about your rejection letters, you didn't stop there. You persevered. And right behind you are two examples of that, uh, the Ginsburg book and the Mr. Rogers book. And congratulations for all of that. I, I, I love the Mr. Rogers. I love both books. Of course, I spent more time <laughs> reading the Mr. Rogers. You spent more time books. with one of them, I was going to say. <laughs> the one that you're actually – and by the way, can we just show – let's just show everyone – Yes, how we drew you because you're in here. I we not not yes. by the way, not everyone is in here, but you are in here. There, there you are, are. Yep. with friends <laughs> right <Club>. up close. <laughs> thank, uh, you. Right. thank you, thank you for thank you for including me. My grandson uh, will course. love it. <laughs> I'm taking it to my That's grandson uh, next. Uh, if week, you ever need copies, you let me know. I can, you, you let me know. Oh. You got unlimited copies coming your way. We'll get you another one too. Uh, okay, well, I, I have one here, and I've gone through it many times, but I'm going to take it to my grandson this Sunday. Just do me one uh, favor. Here's what you should do when you yes. give it to him. You yes. sign it. Sign it to oh. him. Put the message in the book and write the message so he has not just my book, but he has your book. I like that. So feel okay. free. Sign away inside. Put the message you want for him. I would be honored to have you do that. Right okay, before. and I'll say... Speedy deliver, speedy delivery from Brad. <laughs> That's right. That's but, uh, right. And you. He, he's only he's f almost four, so he's right. in the. Uh, right. So he's getting there. Well, we'll get him. We usually get him at like five or six. We go like six to about twelve. Yeah. is our sweet spot. The four and five year olds we get for like I mean, you know, Abraham Lincoln. Those are younger books. This one's probably like a five or six. Um, it just you know each hero. And Frankie goes for more like 10 year olds and Harriet uh -huh. Tubman go for more 10 year olds is more serious issues. Um, but it's amazing because there's one little boy that I'm thinking of who's a four years old loves I am Rosa Parks of all things. You know, this, this little white kid loves I am Rosa Parks. I love that that's his favorite book. And so, as you know, kids are, are, are just amazing. They are. They, well, uh, uh, and sometime when you have a, a few moments, uh, a Google uh, Uncle Wiggly. That's and it, and Uncle it's Wiggly. I have to look that up. And it's a book of its time. You'll have to, some of it may not be uh, politically correct now, but you have to, To I was charmed by it as, as a Great. kid of the, of the I, I guess he really was popular in the late 30s and the 40s, Uncle Wiggly. And that's when I, I was, was the late 40s when I was introduced to it. So, uh, but no one seems to remember it. And it was such a big uh, part of my growing up but introduce yourself to it i and, and you'll see you'll see as you read through so if you and as a surprise one day john our host here gave me some uncle wiggly books <laughs> so i i, I have oh a, that's great yeah, i managed now to I, I i know we're going on and john is probably looking at his watch uh, oh john, no do you want to add anything here yeah and just just actually had one last question for Ben is, is we're beginning to wind down our time with New York Times bestselling author, the co-creator of the beloved Ordinary People Change the World series, Brad Meltzer. We are fully immersed in the goodness that is I Am Mr. Rogers, as well as I Am Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The latest two installments are now available in the Ordinary People Change the World series. We encourage you to head on over to your favorite local children's and or independent bookstores. As we like to say here on both the Children's Book Spotlight series and the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, truly the pillars of our community. If you do head on over to Amazon.com, be sure to leave five-star reviews. For I am Mr. Rogers and I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg, letting Brad, Chris, and the rest of their team know that they're doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. We did have one final quick question and then a gift to be able to give to you as well, Brad. During each children's book spotlight series episode, we love to be able to provide useful tips, tools, strategies for parents, caregivers, grandparents, and educators that they can immediately extract after watching and enjoying a children's book spotlight series episode to not only implement it into their own lives, but the lives of the children that they watch, that they take care of. And we, re we, we still feel the spirit of Mr. Rogers, even though he hasn't been walking this earthly plane in 20 years. Specifically speaking, what do you feel are some tips that we can do our part to live like Fred while simultaneously never lose our connection with our inner child 
and be our truest, most authentic selves in the process. Yeah, I love that. You know, I'm going to, here's what my answer is going to be. It's perfect. I'm going to read you the last page of I am Mr. Rogers. All the, I, the last page, and you'll see, and, and Mr. Newell, you're going to see there's lots of people you worked with on this page. Oh, yes. We actually put a lot, a lot of people that you will recognize on there that, because we can't fill, fit everyone, but we always put them as cameos there. And I have to distill that hero on that last page. And this is what it says here. It says, it's such a good feeling to know we're lifelong friends. And as you grow older, and this is the advice, I hope you'll be a helper. You can help by sharing your kindness with others and showing them love. The greatest thing we can do is to let people know that they are loved and capable of loving. Thank you for spending this time with me. You are a very special person. There is only one you in the whole world. There's never been anyone like you before, and there never will be again. It says, I am Mr. Rogers, and I like you just the way you are. <laughs> and I don't have any better advice than that. I'd be that, that helper. The book is almost a, uh, a TV program, one of Mr. Rogers' programs in the format that you use. It reminds me of watching a program or watching a Mr. Rogers' program. But I love the last the last. Uh, we page. designed it like that, yeah. But we're, 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 the, the cast is lined up along with uh, people who worked on the floor crew. I, 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 I spent probably 15 minutes saying, oh, no, no, that's Betty. Now that is Nick and so forth. You did your homework. <laughs> yeah, Chris Eliopoulos, we do our homework. Chris, I have to find them and then Chris Eliopoulos just draws them. And that's the harder part. And then he, of course, always adds some more that I don't know. I'll tell you one secret about the book is I said to him, you know, what we should do, Chris, and this is the perfect last story. I said, Chris, you know, Mr. Rogers, like the numbers one, four, three was his magic number. And I said to Chris, when he was finished drawing the book, I said, I looked at all the proofs and I said, Chris, we should hide the number 143 on some of the pages in the book as a little Easter egg for people who are really paying attention. And he said, dummy, I already did. You missed them all. <laughs> so throughout the I book, found them. it is, you saw, you, I'm mean, sure you found them, um, but they are hidden throughout the book. And I love the fact that his, I love you is still there. You know, one, four, three means I, I love you. And, you know where that came from? This is Fred's story. Now, uh, there are two stories, but the story I got was he had a summer home in Nantucket, Massachusetts. And there are, of course, lighthouses there. And I drove his car there one year, filled up with a family. This is before I was married and I had a family. I drove his car there so he would have his luggage and his, all the stuff they needed for that summer at his house in Nantucket. And he took me on a little tour of Nantucket, it's a small island, and he pointed to the lighthouse. He said, That's, you know the story of this lighthouse? The whaling, the captains, the, the, the whalers would be out and hunting whales, which I don't approve of, but that's what happened at that time. And the widows, not the widows, but the wives of the whalers would be up on top of the lighthouse and they would send the 143 signal, I guess that's Morse code or something, that says, I love you, out to the their husbands at sea. They weren't far out. Apparently, you could you could uh, do whaling close to the closer to the shore. They could see this 143 signal coming out saying, I love you. And that's the story Fred Fred told me. Mm. I love it. Well, thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it so much. This has been a wonderful time today, Brad. Thank you for spending some time with us here on the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Speedy Thank delivery. You. Speedy <laughs> delivery. Waited the whole time for you to say it. <laughs> speedy, speedy delivery, and thank you for your books, Brad. Thank you, sir. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, Brad. Thanks for the time today. Well, David, we had such... A fun time. We had a magical conversation, these trolley stops here. Now you know that the magical trolley stops are not just on the Neighborly Reviews book app, <laughs> but they are also here on the Children's Book Spotlight series. And we appreciate all of you who have continued to enjoy episode number 205 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. We are putting the beautiful bow 
on this wonderful episode of the program with New York Times bestselling author and the co-creator of the beloved Ordinary People Change the World series. And it's interesting, David, you know, since we're kind of doing our part to kind of, you know, peel the curtain back, so to speak, as the expression goes, not only was this episode recorded on Mr. Rogers' 96th heavenly birthday, but I feel that the love and the spirit of Mr. Rogers was flowing so much that about 15 minutes into the recording of our interview, your camera froze. Oh, <laughs> but we saw this. I, I I can just say this this almost like this proud papa snapshot. Your eyes were looking down at Brad, and it really captured the essence and the heart and the intention of this trolley stop and this program. That was not planned. It was just you know, <laughs> it, it was just the way in which the uh, the uh, our 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 technical neighbors from up above wanted things to be able to play out today, but. Really such a magical episode in so many ways, shapes, and forms, David. You've had the opportunity to see different projects, whether it be children's books, whether it be movies, whether it be documentaries, TV shows. It's been 20 plus years since Fred's transition. And I know that you can tell the attention to the detail he really put in, Brad put in, and his illustrator, Chris, put in a lot of work, not only with I Am Mr. Rogers, but I Am Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And one of the things that we didn't have the chance to mention with Brad, the newest, newest installment of The Ordinary People Change the World series, I Am Stephen Hawking, is set to come out this fall as well. So a little bit okay. of a sneak peek coming attractions in the process. What were your overall thoughts and reflections on our conversation with Brad, David? Oh, there were so I had so many questions I wanted to ask him, and so many, so many comments. But the one thing I enjoyed in the book, and that's me, uh, as you know, the one, four, three, that was Fred's magical numbers, he called them. If you go through the book, every so often, there's one, four, three, right? And I, I picked them out. There is, uh, Oh, uh, one on the uh, uh, a jar, and oh, there's so many. I, I can't. Uh, I, I had them written down here, but I don't have my note in front of me. Uh, but I enjoyed. It was like uh, where's Waldo <laughs> looking for the one four threes in the book. So when your uh, viewers go out and and buy the book or get it from the library, look for the one fourth threes in, in i am mr rogers it's a it's a it's you know you could read it through and it, you could read it through again and make it a game look for the, now this time we'll look for the one four threes now the next time we'll look for uh, the puppets and so forth it's a book you could read over and over and over again I, I think and i can't wait to read it to my uh my grandson i have him well he i don't know if he knows his numbers that well but i'll i'll find a way to uh uh, teach them the one, four, three. <laughs> and one of the things as well, too, that, that I want to mention, but didn't have the chance to during, during our time together with Brad, but we'll, we'll encapsulate it here towards the end of, of, of our part of the conversation is the fact that there's something very special about Mr. Rogers. And there's something very special about, I am Mr. Rogers, because, you know, David, one thing that has changed over the years is that Maybe the heaviness has increased. In many respects, the collective heaviness of the world feels like it's increased. If anything, it feels like it's been amplified even more so mm. than increased. And there are children that are having difficulties just being kids. And there are adults in the process that have lost their inner child along the way. And you can even tell with all of these books in the Ordinary People Change the World series, it's literally the inner child of Mr. Rogers. Mm. It's the inner child of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's the inner child of Walt Disney. It's the inner child of Jim Henson. And Brad not only does his homework, but I can really feel the integrity that he's putting into each story. You can tell when yes. he's when he connected with um with uh the close senator that spent that spent time with um i believe it was rosa parks if i'm not mistaken and in he had mentioned this earlier during the course of, of the program you know he he took the time to be able to do the necessary research yeah. 
on his end of things. And again, that's one of the signs of not only a great children's author, but someone who really wants to do the due diligence. Because one of the things that, and I know that um, Morgan Neville in Won't You Be My Neighbor, the Mr. Rogers documentary, there was a time where Mr. Rogers was parodied, right? He was parodied. Oh, yes. Like, I believe it was on uh, Saturday Night Live, SCTV, in Living Color. I think that those were the three primary ones, if I'm not mistaken. But it's really our job, you know, especially for those who live outside of Pittsburgh. And, you know, put a pin in the thread of, of being in Pittsburgh because we're going to be coming to that thread momentarily. But it's up to us as well, no matter wherever we are in the world, to really keep the memory and the legacy of Mr. Rogers alive and well. Yeah, and PBS is doing that by having it online now. PBSKids.org, you can get that app and you can see, to this day, the programs we made many, many years ago. There are about three or 400 uh, available on the PBS Kids app, as well as, I think, uh, Amazon.com. So if your viewers have never seen a Mr. Rogers Neighborhood program, now's their chance to go see it. You know, it's uh, you're talking about the research that, that Brad did. And I think that same research that he did is this is aligned in a way with the respect that Fred had for his audience. Brad, by doing research, has a respect for his readers, as Fred Rogers did for his viewers. Agreed. Because they took time to find out what children may want to read or you know, I'll make this quick. There was a person who came to work at Mr. Rogers' neighborhood ultimately, but she had as her name, and she graduated from Carnegie Mellon University. She went to, to get a job maybe with Fred, and Fred said, you know something, there's nothing available now, but if you really want to work in children's television, go and find out more about children, learn about children. And she did. She took a two-year course at the University of Pittsburgh, came back, Two years later, and she's still associated with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. But that I say that because it's Fred's example of Fred's respect for children. You know, go learn about children. Find out what makes them tick. And he did, and Hedda did, and I did by proxy, by just working on the program. But I had courses in, in college, but nothing like uh, Hedda's did a child development course as as fred did too anyhow that's my little story we're we're running out of time here speedily so uh do you do you have any more thoughts about what we just did a few things just to be able to mention before we again officially put the bow on episode number 205 of the children's book spotlight series not only has is brad in his own way as well as his illustrator chris who did an amazing job with the illustrations and i yes in their own way, they're keeping the memory and, and legacy of Mr. Rogers alive and well, but it's also how things come full circle because, of course, Mr. Rogers for many years aired on PBS. And yes. Brad has a large influence, of course, in the Xavier Riddle and the Secret Museum, which is, of course, the cartoon, the animated series that is inspired by Ordinary People Change the World and that series. Mm. And so it's just interesting how things come full circle in the process. So again, raise your hand if you have had fun on episode number 205 <laughs> oh, of the Children's oh, I have. Light Series. We <laughs> see hands from myself. We see hands from David. Little Forrest wants to chime in as well, too. The One of the other things that we forgot to mention while Brad is joining us, one of the fastest growing endorsements in the world of children's literature. You, of course, remember when the late cinema duo of Siskel and Ebert, when they loved a movie, they gave it two thumbs up. Well, when Little Forrest actually enjoys a children's book, he gives two paws up. So Little Forrest is probably giving two paws up to both. I am Mr. Rogers, and I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg as well, too. Again, you can also head on over to the official website of the Ordinary People Change the World series, Ordinary People Change the World, which we've included in the description below as well, too. You can purchase your copies of I Am Mr. Rogers, I Am Ruth Bader Ginsburg, as well as the rest of the installments in the Ordinary People Change the World series. You can head on over to your favorite bookstore, you, especially we're huge, uh, we're huge proponents of 
the children's bookstores and the local independent bookstores as well as well as local libraries all across the country as we like to say here at PR from the heart they are truly the pillars of our community of course if you head on over to amazon.com if that's your preferred online vehicle of your choosing you can leave five star reviews for i am mr rogers and i am ruth bader ginsburg again as well as the rest of the collection that is the ordinary people change the world series that is just one of the many ways you can pledge your support for Brad to let him know that he's doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books. Now, as we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. But David, fear not. There are many more magical trolley stops to come here at PR from the Heart. I know, of course, and we'll be mentioning our, our, our forthcoming travels together. Technically, it's my travels, and I'll be seeing you very shortly before I mention that. If you are a children's or middle grade author and would love to share your inspiring story on a forthcoming edition of the Children's Book Spotlight series, just as Brad did today here on the program, we encourage you to head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, or connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen. Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter slash X. We used to kind of joke around here at Pierre from the Heart and, and refer to it as the artist formerly known as Twitter because now it is referred to as X. So we like to refer to it as Twitter slash X. So for those of you who know Twitter as Twitter, those of you who know X as X, we've got you covered in the process. But again, if you are new to the program here at the Children's Book Spotlight series, David Newell and I, we take the time each and every month as a little bit of the tip of the cap to not only David's character on the program, Mr. McFeely, but also to the late Fred Rogers on PR from the Heart's Neighborly Reviews bookcast, we deliver heartfelt reviews each and every month from some of the newest children's books that are available to let parents, caregivers, educators know that these resources of care are there for your children. So we take the time to be able to share some of the newest published books that are available from some of the top award-winning and best-selling published authors, as well as those shining stars, those rising stars in the kid-lit community whose journeys are just taking flight. And of course, the majority of the time, David and I, we do our remote virtual episodes. So this is like how you see it right now. David is in Pittsburgh. I'm here in San Diego. But there's a couple of times per year where even more magic happens. And literally, within the next several days, I will be off on a plane. Technically, the trolley transforms into a plane. That's how awesome our trolley is here at PR From the Heart. But we will be heading across the country and spending some quality time with our friends and neighbors at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh. We will be recording two special installments of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast for the months of April and May. Stay connected to the official PR from the Heart YouTube channel. Stay connected to prfromtheheart.com. We're looking forward to sharing some really sweet stories with you and some amazing children's authors are going to be part of those very special trolley stops as well. David, there's something about Pittsburgh as, as I had alluded to beforehand, in many respects, it's as if Mr. Rogers, even though he did pass away over 20 years ago, it's almost as if he's still very much alive and well. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy when I travel back to Pittsburgh, in addition to being able to enjoy some nice potato pierogi, because Pittsburgh <laughs> has some really good pierogi. And in addition to spending some time with you, you really feel as if the spirit of Mr. Rogers is fully present and is, is if he's still with us. You do, you do because uh, if you've never been to Pittsburgh, there is a statue dedicated to children in childhood but fred is the symbol of that and it is a beautiful statue near the um, the sports stadium so if you're a visitor to pittsburgh check that out and also the heinz history museum right. has the original mr rogers neighborhood set and that's downtown pittsburgh so that's another stop on your mr rogers tour and one more quick thing saint vincent's college is about 50 miles away from pittsburgh has a collection of all the archives and there's a there is a, a visitor center you can visit and a little more during the summer down the road a bit there is a trolley ride at the Idlewild park amusement park it's a trolley ride through the neighborhood of make-believe so if you're visiting pittsburgh please please take those sites and you'll you'll love them and that trolley ride is open to adults. You gave me an idea because yeah. then I may have to check that out. 
Oh yes, that's yes, it's a real trolley. It's not a it's a trolley the size of a real trolley and the the tracks are real tracks. It's not a miniature trolley. It's a you can but uh I would say 50 50 50 people can ride on it. It's a little squeezing, but you can and it goes through this wonderful neighborhood of make believe where there's Daniel's clock and it's it's Daniel themed now, but there's a McFeely there waving to people. So I recommend it highly. Ida Wild Park is for families with young children. It, 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 the, the age range is you know, two years old, uh, up to about 12-ish. Then I, the teenagers tend to go to another park in Pittsburgh. But Ida Wild Park is the place to take your family. Wonderful. I, it's just a beautiful day in the neighborhood, so to speak. <laughs> and take a picnic lunch, too. It's like going back to the 50s. Just you were saying the essence of Mr. Rogers is in that park. Because you know something? That's where he went as a child to that park. Huh. And... And he loved it so, and I think that's one of the reasons that they have the uh, a, a ride dedicated to him and to Daniel Tiger. So, a little bit of my uh, a tourist advice for you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I, very, very well taken and very well received. So, again, if you are a children's author, and, and if you loved your time here with David Newell, since this is his first time on the Children's Book Spotlight series, if you would love for David and I to deliver a heartfelt review of your brand new children's book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, sooner than we know, we're going to be heading into the summer reading season, the back to school season, and the holiday season. So we will have you covered and then some. Head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, or connect with us via any of our social media platforms. Again, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter slash X. And again, we have been privileged and proud and honored to be able to be of service to some of the top names in the world of children's literature. John Para, Catherine Roy, many of those children's authors whose journeys are truly now taking flight and then some. And we are super excited because when we come back from our time out on the East Coast, Pittsburgh and Buffalo, spending some time with our dear friends out in the city of good neighbors. So we go from, of course, the city of our favorite neighbor to the city of good neighbors, no pun intended, right? Fully true. But we are going to be starting the countdown to the 10 year anniversary celebration of us being of service to children's authors all across the country and all around the world. So if you are a children's or middle grade author and are looking for dedicated support to not only share your inspiring story, but to connect with the media so that you can reach more parents, caregivers, educators, so that you can really make more of a difference in the lives of children all across the country. We encourage you to head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, schedule your courtesy connection call, and let us see how we can be of service to you for your very own book media tour, national book media tour in the process. We're really looking forward to seeing how we can help and support you. 2024 is off to a banner start. And there again are more magical trolley stops to come. But again, one final time, we encourage you to head on over to the official website of Ordinary People Change the World, the beautiful series that Brad has brought into being, right? Just as Fred has helped love us into being Brad and his illustrator, Chris have brought this beautiful series into being. Ordinary People Change the World, the series, the entire collection is now available. Today, we had the chance to spotlight I Am Mr. Rogers. We had a chance to also mention as well, I Am Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Again, there are more installments in this series. I Am Jim Henson. I Am Walt Disney. Those are also two of my other personal favorites as well, too. If Amazon.com is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing, be sure to leave five-star reviews for... I am Mr. Rogers and for I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg or any or all of the rest of the Ordinary People Change the World series. That will let Brad and Chris know that they're doing wonderful and magical work, much needed work as well for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books as well. But as I had mentioned, when we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. We want to thank you for your continued support. PR from the heart for your continued support of the Children's Book Spotlight series and the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, for your continued support of children's authors and illustrators such as New York Times bestselling author Brad Meltzer, who again are doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, for those who love great children's books, and for all of our fellow neighbors out there as well too. 
for continuing to support local libraries and children's and independent bookstores, truly the pillars of our community. But above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home. The children of the world, one other final time, we felt his spirit. Of course, it's it, from when we're recording this episode, we're celebrating the 96th heavenly birthday of our favorite neighbor, Mr. Rogers. And in many ways, shapes and forms, while he was walking this earthly plane, simply by being 143 pounds, he reminded us in his own private numerology, as Tom Junot said, that he loved and cared for us and really appreciated us just the way that we were, just the way that we are. Did you know that Mr. Rogers weighed 143 pounds for his entire natural adult life? As we like to say here at PR From the Heart, the Children's Book Spotlight Series and the Neighborly Reviews book has, I feel that maybe Mr. Rogers connected with Ponce de Leon in, in a past life because he had the fountain of youth. That's for darn sure. So again, as we feel the spirit of Mr. Rogers and is his favorite no, three numbers were one, four, three, because again, there's one letter in I, four letters in love and three letters in you. And as David was kind enough to spend some free time with us here today, crossing sectors, crossing from the Neighborly Reviews book cast to the Children's Book Spotlight series, as Little Forest was kind enough to spend some quality time with us, as well as New York Times bestselling author, Brad Melters, he was kind enough to spend some time with us in his busy schedule. We like to share our favorite three numbers of 243. There's two letters in we, four letters in love, and three letters in you. That is our reminder that you are whole, that you are healthy, that you are complete, that you are loved, that you are special, just the way that you are. That we like you, that we love you, just the way that you are. So again, I'm going to be hopping aboard the trolley. The trolley transforms into a plane. We'll be seeing all of you for more magical trolley stops to come, including the next two in-studio featured Neighborly Reviews bookcasts for the month of April and for the month of May at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh. I will say last thing, David, before we officially close this, this is the first time that you have been a part of the Children's Book Spotlight series. I'm curious to get your thoughts of the program because it's a little bit of a different vibe, a little bit of a different energy from the from the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, but you can tell there's a little bit of a similar neighborly thread with both programs. Yes, there. But you get. I had a. Well, I don't know if it was normal, but I had a a, a wonderful conversation with Brad. With things kept going on and on, and I was so curious. You know, I I only got to about two questions that I had for him. I had so many more to ask him, but it 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 the flow was wonderful, and I learned so much about him. That's his story it was very interesting to me, and his his teacher and. Uh, so I'm glad to be. I'm glad to have my first appearance here in the uh, the neighborly uh, you, the neighborly what the neighborly children's book spotlights. As I know that over the past three years we've been doing the neighborly reviews bookcast. So <laughs> all of you who are scoring at home, you have the neighborly reviews bookcast, and then you have the children's book spotlights well, here. Well, I was in the spotlight today along with Brad and you and. Well, little Forrest is there on the floor. Forrest being your dog. So yes, in case faithful, people are wondering. My my faithful furry friend and companion. Nope. So again, thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world. Our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Speedy delivery. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye.